We're going to take a brief look at what NX workspaces are all about. And instead of giving you an introduction to the concepts first, we are just going to dive right into it. So you can create a new NX workspace with the npx create NX workspace command. And if it asks you to install the create NX workspace package, you can just say yes to that. And now it's going to ask us for some information. So we need to give our workspace a name, which is typically the organization name. The general idea is that a workspace is a mono repo that will contain all of the projects for our organization. So you would name this your company name usually, or if you're just an individual, maybe you'll just give it a name that is your name. So I'm gonna create a workspace called Josh Maroney. And a workspace is just a generic workspace that can hold any type of application, but you might specifically have something in mind that you want to build. So we can use one of these starters here to uh, set up our workspace in the way we want. So if I'm planning on doing some Angular development, I might want to get started with an Angular application already ready to go. So if I choose the Angular option here, it's going to create a workspace with a single Angular application inside of it for me. So since we are creating an Angular application inside of this workspace, we're going to give it a name. I'll just call it my app. And X will also even configure the styling that we want to use with the project. So we can just go ahead and choose whichever we prefer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just choose SAS. And then we'll get the option to use NX Cloud or not. I'm not going to get too much into NX Cloud here, but the basic idea is that within an NX workspace, there is this thing called computational caching setup where basically the workspace is going to remember the outputs of things that you have built. So if you have commands that take a long time to run, if nothing has changed and you need to run that command again, it can just take the result from the cache rather than having to rebuild everything again. And the idea with NX Cloud is that it allows you to store these caches in the cloud with NX. And so if you're working in an organization, it's going to allow you to share the output of those computations with anyone who might be working in this workspace, not just on your machine. Uh, but for now, we're just going to say no to that. So now with all those questions answered, it's just going to go through uh, installing and creating everything for us. Okay, so the workspace is finished generating now. So I'm just going to CD into that. And we're gonna open it up in VS Code now to take a look at everything. Okay, so we have our workspace open now. And so an NX workspace is a mono repo. And a mono repo is just a repository that contains multiple different projects, uh, potentially even every single project for your entire organization. So an NX workspace probably looks pretty intimidating to begin with, but the basic idea is reasonably simple. So a lot of the stuff you'll see over on the left here is similar to what you'd see in any kind of modern web development project. We just have some configuration files uh, set up. And since we chose the Angular option here, we also have some Angular specific things set up here, uh, but NX isn't specific to Angular. Uh, or React or Vue, it can use any uh, sort of project or framework or whatever you want to put into here. So we set up a mono repo or an NX workspace with one app already created for us, a single Angular application. And we can see that inside of the apps folder. So we have the app itself here, which has been created and we have uh, some end-to-end -end tests set up for it as well. So all of the different applications within the mono repo will be created inside of this apps folder. And these apps don't need to be all of the same type either. Just because we created a, an Angular application here, we don't need to just have Angular applications inside of this mono repo. We could have uh, Ionic, Angular, React, Nest.js, we could have an Express project set up. Uh, all of this can live inside of this single mono repo. So all of our apps live inside of this apps folder and any code that we want to share between multiple different applications will live inside of this libs folder. Ideally, as much code as possible will be added to libraries that will live in this libs folder as sharing code between different apps easily is one of the key benefits of using a mono repo. So maybe you've got a few apps set up in this folder here and maybe you're creating a component that displays a 
say a message in a chat bubble or something like that. Instead of coding it directly into one of these applications, we could have some kind of shared UI library in this libs folder, and then every single application could make use of that single library. And so that means if we ever need to update that component or if there's some bug or whatever, we only need to update this in one place and then potentially uh, one, five, 10 or 20 different projects can all benefit from that update at the same time. And our NX workspace will have a bunch of commands available for creating new applications, libraries, plugins, components, uh, building our applications, serving specific applications, testing them. So there's a lot of different commands uh, which can be a little bit overwhelming. So a great way to explore what is available and get some guidance is to use the NX console extension for VS Code. Okay, so I've just opened up my activity bar here where you can see that I have the NX console extension installed. If you don't have that, you'll just need to go into the extent, uh, extensions and search for it and install it. But once you do that, you'll see a little interface like this, and then we can uh, click on the various options here to see what commands are available. So if I click on just the generate here, it's going to pop up a little window for me here where I can select a command and we can also sort of search between it. So if we're only interested in, uh, I know we want to remove something, we can just type remove to filter that down. So let's say I want to uh, generate a new application, a new Angular application inside of this mono repo. I can just uh, click on this option here and then it's going to give me this little GUI interface for creating it. So let me just do a test application here. I'll just call it a test. And what it's going to do is do a dry run of that command. So you can see down here that this command has been run for us and we can see everything that gets created. So if that all looks good to us, we can click the run command or we could copy and paste the command if we wanted to modify it. And then it's going to run that command for real. So it's a good way to preview what is actually happening with these commands. We could jump over into uh, the build uh, command, for example, and we might want to build my app. So I could click on that. And you'll notice that since we are inside of an Angular application, these uh, commands are using the ng commands, but also typically we will just use the nx commands for building and generating things. If I just bring up my terminal again here, we might do something like uh, say nx build my project or my app or whatever it's called. And that's going to build one specific project from our mono repo. We might do something like nx serve, nx deploy. Uh, if we want to generate new applications, we can also do nx generate or nxg. And then whatever plugin we want to use to generate uh, an application. So for Angular, that might look like this. Or if we wanted to create a React application instead, or if we had the Gatsby plugin installed and wanted to create a new Gatsby site, we could do this. So there are a ton of commands and a ton of cool things we can do with uh, an NX workspace. So having this console here is uh, just great for exploring what is available. So the other key aspect to using a mono repo is that all of the applications will share a single set of dependencies that will live inside of the package.json file at the root of your project. So you can see I have a package.json file here and I have a bunch of dependencies uh, in this file. And if we open up my app, we can see that there is no package.json specifically for the Angular application that was created. It is possible to manage dependencies individually between different projects or apps, um, but generally using a single package.json file is recommended as again, this is one of uh, the key benefits of a mono repo in that we can update everything all in one place. So that idea might sound scary. Uh, you might think who would want to update a single dependency that's now going to affect 10 or 20 or even a hundred different applications. Uh, who could possibly think that would be a good idea? It just sounds like a good way to ruin your weekend. So this is why having well-defined automated tests for your applications is especially important with this strategy as any complications due to a dependency update should be easily visible. And it's also generally recommended that these updates are done often. So you're just dealing with little changes at a time rather than tackling 
major version upgrades all at once. And if you do have all of your applications inside of a single monorepo, then you are much more likely to keep things consistently updated as you'll be working with it all the time rather than having a project off on its own in a repository that might not be touched for a year. So if it does make you feel any better about the concept, this is the strategy that Google uses for I believe thousands of their applications, all of which live inside a single monorepo. And this is something that the creators of NX uh, who are ex-Googlers are very familiar with. So if you're interested in NX and monorepos and would like me to continue this series, uh, let me know. Future topics might include creating new apps in a workspace and using plugins, uh, migrating existing apps into an NX workspace, creating libraries, moving existing code into libraries to share with other apps, creating your own custom build commands. Uh, if anything in that list particularly interests you, uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.